As we uh, continue to get geared up for the beginning of spring training, pitchers and catchers officially reporting in a few days. Some guys are already there working out. Uh, other guys are just locked up in a cold stadium, a lonely stadium somewhere, kind of like Adam McAlvey out in Milwaukee where it's, uh, let me guess the degrees, uh, okay. six. No, I think it's Plus. warmer than that, although Ooh. the car, you know, the car temperature is always a little screwed up when you come out of the garage. I think I saw 15. Oh, that's not oh. bad. That's like a not heat bad. wave. That makes the cross-country skiing fast. That's good. <laughs> All right, so while you're all bundled up inside Miller Park, we thank you for joining us. Uh, obviously, the big news out of uh, Brewers camp right now uh, is that uh, Jonathan Lucroy, a little hamstring issue. Where do things stand with him right now? Well, I mean, Paul, this is the time of year where something like this happens and the player and the team can say better now, you know, on February 11th, this was yesterday, than, than April 11th. And that is the case because even at their most conservative timeline, a six-week recovery from this, it puts him ready right before um, opening day, maybe a week or so before. So they uh, gave him one of those PRP injections on this the other day. They're going to rest him a little bit. Um, the other thing is the Brewers say he'll still be able to do some things in spring training. He'll be able to hit a little bit. He'll be able to take some grounders at first base, which is important because he's going to be a part of the picture there this season. And the other thing Jonathan Lucroy wanted to say yesterday is that he dealt with either this same injury or a very similar one last August and September, and it never came up. He played through it, um, never was out of the lineup as far as I can remember or as far as was reported at the time. And he thinks that's a big deal and that, you know, this isn't a reason for panic because he's kind of played through it before. That said, at the start of the year, they want to obviously knock it out. Well, you talked about him playing a little bit of first base, so I, I want to ask you about their catching situation. And who's going to get that next man up? And who's the other guy licking his chops saying, man, I got an opportunity here? <laughs> well, the other guy is Martin Maldonado, who, as backups go, is pretty darn good. A, an amazing defensive catcher, probably the best arm of any catcher in baseball. He's pitched for the Brewers before, and they actually have to tell him to dial back because they think he could get up there well into the 90s. Um, so they're, well, they're set there. They signed him to a two-year deal. Uh, he was an arbitration guy, and they locked him up for a couple years. So they like where they're at in terms of a backup. But listen, Jonathan Lucroy last year was one of the best offensive catchers in baseball. He was the first catcher ever to lead his league, much less the major leagues in doubles. He hit 301. I mean, this guy is up there now with the Buster Poseys of the world. You have to include him in that conversation. He's one of the best framers of pitches in baseball. So losing him would be a big loss for this Brewers team, even though they like what Maldonado does behind the plate. You know, but again, the Lucroy's line yesterday was there's no need to panic. This is something that can be knocked out with a couple of weeks of rest. They're glad they found it now. And he has every intention of being behind the plate on opening day. No doubt better now than a couple months from now. Uh, how about the bullpen right now? Where do things stand with perhaps improving the bullpen? Our, our own Ken Rosenthal said maybe K-Rod's holding out for a two-year deal, perhaps with the Brewers. Uh, is he a guy that they're trying to zero in on and try to fortify that pen a little bit more? Well, you know, my understanding is that this has been a fluid discussion up there in these front offices. They've looked at, obviously, Jonathan Papelbon of the Phillies, haven't been able to come to a deal, as Ken reported last night. Again, an update on that. They, they haven't been able to strike a deal on the proper exchange of players and money in that what would be a very complicated trade. So then you look at K-Rod, a guy with lots of history in Milwaukee. He's already basically been acquired by the Brewers three separate times if you uh, count up all, all the times he's come back to this team. A, a level of comfort and look he reestablished himself last year as a bona fide closer a role he lost when he got traded to Milwaukee in 2011 and became a setup man he was durable 40 plus saves I don't blame him and Scott Boris for trying to get a two-year deal out of this especially when you look around at some of the other relievers Pat Neshek um, some of the other guys who've, who've signed for multi-years uh, Zach Duke was in Milwaukee last year he gets three years 15 million so it would not surprise me at all uh, to see K-Rod hold out. The question is, are the Brewers willing to go there? Um, they've got Jonathan Broxton committed $9 million plus uh, some money beyond that for an option. Um, they really like a lefty they've got out there, Will Smith at the top of that list. He has closer potential. Uh, another guy, Jeremy Jeffress, a former number one pick. He came back in a big way for this Brewers team last year. And then two other names on that list are important in terms of what the Brewers do next. Jim Henderson, Tyler Thornburg. Not names probably known to everybody out there, but Henderson was penciled in as the closer for this team last spring. 
He had a bad shoulder, never got going. Now he's coming back from surgery. And Thornburg is not too long ago the Brewers' number one prospect. And last April, he was basically unhittable before he had an elbow injury. He avoided surgery. He's back. And we were told Doug Melvin is out in Arizona just this week, saw both throw a bullpen, and was really pleasantly surprised of where those guys are at. So with, with all that said, the Brewers, they don't need necessarily to sign another reliever. Would they like one? Yes, but I think they would be much more comfortable with K-Rod for one year. What about that rotation? Because at least from the outside, uh, it looked as though when they traded Giovanni Gallardo, you heard a little bit of rumbling saying, all right, maybe they're going to go out and get a James Shields. They can lock him up for more time, uh, for more years than Gallardo would have been there. And then they obviously didn't end up with James Shields. Whether or not he even wanted to play in Milwaukee where it's 15 degrees or San Diego where it never <laughs> dips below 72, I don't know. Uh, but are they okay with where the rotation is right now? Well, the general manager says yes, and even before, well before Shield signed, I asked Doug Melvin, what are the odds you add another notable starter? His response was, we don't have room. We have five guys that we like, and that includes the two at the back end, Michael Fires and Jimmy Nelson. Now, he was most recently their number one prospect. He came up, he had some struggles in the second half of last year, but he's a big horse. They think he has a future in the big leagues as at least a middle of the rotation starting pitcher. Kyle Loesch now at the top. And then the other guy that no one talks about is Willie Peralta. Big guy, 98 with great sink, the kind of pitcher hitters do not like to face. He is going to have to establish himself now as a bona fide, you know, number one, number two type guy. And then you can kind of see this rotation, you know, being okay. They don't have a tremendous amount of depth. That's the thing. So will they look at trades? Sure. But, but again, Doug Melvin's line, at least publicly, is that they feel like they've got their five guys and they're set. All right. Hey, I, I got one quick question for you before Paul lets you go here. Uh, Ricky it's cold, Weeks, man. That's why. You know, Ricky Weeks signed with Seattle. Uh, and I'm curious, your thoughts when you heard of that signing, and would there have been a possibility he'd been a utility in Milwaukee? You know, I don't think so. I think the Brewers have other uh, more cost-effective options, younger guys that they can plug into those roles right now. And, and going to Seattle surprises me not at all because it's Jack Zarensic going again for one of his former guys. Remember, he was the scouting director here in Milwaukee. He's very loyal to his former picks. And to Ricky Week's credit, there was much made last year when he – sort of declined to try left field when the Brewers had a need out there. He said, I'm a second baseman. Some people think that hurt him in this free agency period. But I give him credit for doing his job off the Brewers bench last year. They platooned him with Scooter Jeanette. And Ricky Weeks actually had a productive year if you just look at the numbers. And I actually give him some credit for making that adaptation. And it wouldn't surprise me at all to see him have some success in Seattle if he is accepting of a more utility type role. All right, Adam, go get yourself a hot cocoa, warm up. We'll talk to you again soon, all right? All right, see you guys.